E tu tātou, please be upright. Koi nei te wahanga timata o te tātou huarahi. No reira kia karaki ake tātou. So this is the beginning of our journey. And I'm going to conduct the incantation. It's a psychic modality that shifts us out of a state of normality into a state that we call sacred. Whakarongo rā rangi nui ki te pū kōrero te ahuirewa. Manoa nei ki te atahua ki rangi te manoa nei ki te atahua ki papa. He tīrama nuku, he tīrama rangi te aho ki runga te aho ki raro, te aho ki rangi a te anui. Manoa mai hoki i te whatuwhiwhia, te whatuiroea, te whatukorongata, te whatui hoiho. He toko uri, he toko o tea, he maapuna ka ure e ka whakahokia ki te pō. Manoa mai te putanga o enei pūkenga, enei tauira, enei wānanga, enei taura. I ngā kino te pō, ngā poke o te pō, putu ki te whai ia o ki te amārama. E rongo e tāwhrau ti e nei tauira, ki te kahu atua, ki te kahu take e take i ahua mai te kāwhi o ngā riki. Whānō, whānō, hara mai te toki, haumi e hui e tā i ki e. E te iwi, e ngā rau o te manu taupua, hiri hiri mai ana te nā koutou. Te nā koutou hara mai, hara mai, hara mai rā. Hara mai rā ki roto i tēnei whare. I runga i te reo karanga, i karanga hia e, tō tātou pākehi nei, ko tātaki. Ko i nei te kaupapa ko Future Now. A nei te anamata i ko nei. Te nā koutou hara mai, wahaina mai o koutou mate ki a mihia ki a tangi hia. E tātou te rānei. Ki a mātou, oh, ko tētahi o ngā tōtara nui, i hingāia i te wā nui a tāne, ko ia ko Joe Hawk. Nō rira, e parata, e tio, e hohepa, e te makau o tāmaki makaurau. Ko ki wairu o mai? Takotoa i tō takatoranga, i takotoa i tō tini, tō manu. Whakangaro atura. Ka hoki nei au ki te whai ao, ki te ao mārama tihe mauri ora tēnā tātou. Kia koutou te hunga kaunihera e te koromatua, pai te kite ki a koe e whau. Tō hunga nei tēnā koutou. Ngāti, rua nui, whakatohia, koutou e kawaya mai nei o koutou maunga o koutou awa o koutou tupuna ki wainganui a tātou tēnā koutou. Ka huri au ki te reo tāhai whenua hei whakamarama ai ki a tātou. So I'm just switching to channel two to take a moment to talk about a future now, just last century. I mentioned Joe Hawk and the word tātaki for Auckland Unlimited speaks to the pedigree of leadership, how unlimited it is to be at the front, but the responsibility that that takes. It means you need to be a mana economist what is the training for a mana economist? Well, my uncle would have told you, it is sacrifice. Until you are willing to sacrifice, how do you make the big moves? And I watched this legend that I grew up with. I watched them one day welcome another legend called Nelson Mandela into our sacred house. And that moment is pinned in my mnemonic psyche forever. It helps me realize how important sacrifice is. What future do you want to make for our babies? Ngā uri e heke mai ana. We cannot leave debts for them anymore. The future is now. Kia koutou te hunga rangatahi, tēnā koutou. Koutou ko tai ki te wā. Tautoko hia, whakamana hia te kaupapa e koutou mā tēnā koutou. So our rangatahi are here. Where is the voice of the mountain? You see, my Uncle Joe, his sacrifice was about last century. Māori lives matter. Women's lives matter. The trees' lives matter. True diversity. And he is the descendant of Apihai Te Kaua, who gifted the city to all of us. I can remember asking my uncle, and, and Phil will talk to you about the sacrifices my uncle made. 
I can tell you that one day I said to him, Uncle, man, after you got the lands back, why didn't you put up a barbed wire fence? You know, I mean, you experienced all that, all those isms. And he said, nephew, you know what? To share mana and share prosperity is hard work. So fine, share mana, share prosperity. Those lands are still open for you as an exemplar of how to make big sacrifice. Thank you for giving an oxygen stealer from Ngāti Whātua the moment here. But how we move into these moments in space and time. While there's so many absent, you made it. Congratulations. This way or this way? Okay. Hi, I'm Josh. I'm 10 years old and I live in Tiara Two Peninsula. Kotoku Ingwa Kotepaya. My name is Tepaya. My name is L U C Y Lucy. I'm Aria and I'm hopeful for the future. Hi, I'm Will and this is Auckland's Future Now. <laughs> Auckland to me is very inviting, very colourful. I like all the forests and hikes, the beaches. I came to New Zealand from China. I was like, ooh, nice city. I personally really love Mount Eden and how that, that used to be a volcano that used to erupt. Uh, my favourite part about Auckland City might be the dog park by my house. And I love the marae here. Yeah, zoo, museum. Yeah, I love the museum. Roller skating round, going on our bikes, e-scooters. Just looking at all of the amazing views. And the pools. Auckland is definitely home for me. It's also very inclusive to people who came overseas, like me. If I wrote a book about Auckland, it would be called Toku Kainga, My Home. If there was one thing that I would change, it would be more electric cars. The worst thing about Auckland is traffic. The environment's not really clean. I'm worried about pollution. But I'll clean it up myself if no one um, does it. If you're going to write a book about Auckland, what would the title be? Um, how Auckland City can get better. Yeah. One thing we can do to change the future is stop climate change. To help the oceans and Papa to and the kids to get more healthier. Use recycled materials in building stuff. Plant quite a few trees, maybe like one a month. Um, that'd be good. And probably more rubbish bins around. I don't know what the future's going to be like because you've never seen it before. I suspect there might be more inventions. I feel like there'll be a lot of robots. A toaster robot, um, it has laser eyes. There'd be magic, like Harry Potter. <laughs> I'd like there to be more art. I would like to see more festivals and art galleries. Lots and lots of area for nature. The thing is, you can't really change the past, but you can change the future. Tato katoa, e hui hui nei, tēnā koutou katoa. E te rangatira nui, takutu Joe Hawk. E moi i te oki oki mutonga. 
Moi mai, moi mai, moi mai i roto i tō tatou kai hanga. Ka nui te mihi ki a koutou o Ngāti Whātua o Rākei. Ea ngā mana e ngā reo, e ngā hau e whā o Aotearoa. Tāmiki here ngā waka, tāmiki here ngā tangata, tāmiki makaurau. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. Um, thank you, Te Araha, uh, for honouring and blessing this event on behalf of Tangata Whenua of Tamaki Makaurau, Auckland. Um, acknowledge the passing of, of Joe Hawke. But um, mana economist, I like that one already. Um, my name is Nick Hill. I'm the chief executive of Tataki Auckland Unlimited. And it is my pleasure to welcome you here today at the Cordis for the 2022 edition of Auckland Future Now. We will be joined later by uh, MC Melissa Chan Green. She'll be fresh from finishing her show around uh, 10 a.m. this morning. Until then, you've got me. The uh, event today is brought to you by Tataki Auckland Unlimited. Uh, Tataki means the leader of the haka. Tātaki Auckland Unlimited's role is to lead conversations, to provide a place where together we can create actions. And that is why we are here today, and I look forward to hearing your thoughts. I look forward, I would like to extend a special welcome to those guests joining us online from around New Zealand and overseas. The program today is action-packed, and you'll find it online and on your table. If the, um, if you are in person with us. Now, just to cover the housekeeping for today, the current guidelines for COVID-19 eyes per the welcome letter that you will have all received. Please wear your masks in all the public areas. That's the registration and the bathrooms. And if you need a mask, there are masks at the registration desk that staff have available. Uh, it's your choice to wear a mask in the plenary room, and it's not mandatory. Bathrooms are located out the doors at the back of this room to the right. Uh, if there is an emergency, please follow the instructions of the hotel staff who will guide you. And of course, can you just please ensure your phones are on silent. Now, COVID-19 seems to have warped time. It, it doesn't feel like a year has passed since the second Auckland Future Now event that was held here at the quarters. Many of you will have been here amid a sense of tentative optimism, but that was prior to the arrivals of Delta and then Omicron. So a year on, and it feels like we have turned a corner with borders reopening and many COVID-related restrictions lifted or lifting. But in other ways, the depth of the pandemic challenges are only now starting to show themselves. We are reminded every day of the devastating impact COVID-19 has had on many of the region's business community. And, and let's be honest, um, some industries that were previously so important to our region face a long, uncertain path to potential recovery. Our city centre has really suffered, and one of today's panels will discuss its plight. It's often said that Tamaki Makaurau, Auckland, is the nation's growth engine. Well, it's been misfiring for a couple of years now. Not only has our GDP per capita been declining in actual terms, that's our productivity, but it has declined even faster than the rest of New Zealand. Maybe Niraj Lala, the CEO of Toyota New Zealand, who will speak to us soon, has brought some overalls, um, as well as inspired technology of tomorrow insights. Getting Auckland firing on all cylinders will require the private sector and the public sector to listen and work well together. Each have important roles to play. We are looking forward to the contributions of Ministers Shaw and Nash. We've also seen some positive value from these Tataki Auckland Unlimited events. Some excellent initiatives have emerged from them, including a working group which focused on solutions to the border-related issues. And I remember that from the, the first uh, Auckland Unlimited um, 
and the feedback that was provided directly to the Prime Minister and the working group that was set up from that, that worked, has worked tirelessly since that time to, to bring a sense of reality to some of the officials' um, advice and decision making. We have people here today who will help us focus on how the disruption of the COVID-19 can also be a catalyst, as well as look towards other massive challenges such as climate change. And I know Mayor Phil Goff will offer us some thoughts on that shortly. Almost exactly a year ago, Professor Sir Peter Gluckman gave a provocative keynote address at the second Auckland Future Now about how we must all better understand Auckland's unique assets to create a robust and sustainable platform for our tamariki. Tātaki, Auckland Unlimited, commissioned Sir Peter's think tank, Koi2, the Centre for Informed Futures, to prepare a provocation on Auckland's long-term future. We asked Koi2 to look forward two generations, that's five decades, to suggest the kinds of evolution the region needs. A massive amount of work went into the resulting Reimagining Tamaki Makoto report which lays out nine scenarios of what Auckland could become with the right forward thinking. Our first panel today will provide insights into how Auckland can become a truly global, livable and sustainable city that is fit for the future. Koi2 set out to provoke discussion, debate and generate ideas. Let's deliver on that approach today. As a region, we must harness the potential of our world-class industry sectors which are represented here today. I think about the screen industry, which has attracted some of the global giants in content creation and has, hap has rapidly grown beyond its Henderson heartland. An aerospace sector that's now worth about 1.7 billion that employs 12,000 people. Our technology sectors and creative economy, which are huge employers. The video gaming industry is well suited to the storytelling abilities of Auckland's Māori and Pacifica communities. The Māori economy session on the program this afternoon will be hugely rewarding, I'm sure. Today's final panel will be led by Simon Wilson, and he will, he will explore how we bring our central city back to life. And I'm sure um, Simon's passionate advocacy for future thinking will, luge, will loom large in that discussion. The COVID-19 pandemic has been a massive disruptor and a, catalyze, a catalyst to revise how we work, consume, travel, live and belong. It has and it will continue to accelerate change. It's a long tail and the global economic, head, the global economic headwinds will continue to present challenges. But it truly feels like we are at a moment in time that will help define the next 50 years. We have an outstanding lineup of speakers and panelists to help us cover these and many other questions today. The people on the stage today will have the microphones for the most part, but it is the role of everyone to be part of the discussion. Join the conversation by sending questions through to Slido at any time using the code hashtag FutureNow2022. Hashtag future now 22. So, we have a busy morning. It's my pleasure now to welcome Mayor Phil Goff to open Auckland Future Now. Kia ora tato, tenete mihi nui ki a koto, no mai, piki mai, haere mai, na mana whenua o Tamaki Makaoro, uh, Nati Fatua o Rākei, uh, tēnā koutou, uh, Joe Hawke, uh, e te rangatira, e Joe, uh, haere, haere, haere atu rā, moe mai, moe mai, moe mai. Uh, good morning and uh, welcome to everybody here. May I acknowledge the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Pippa Coombe. Um, we've got a lot of local board members here. It's great to see them, uh, but people from right across our community. And I want to thank you for being here today and participating. Um, I must give my apologies um, and, and our councillors. Um, this morning we lead a delegation up to uh, the Marae at Orake, 
uh, to farewell uh, Joe. Joe, who I was in Parliament with for six years. Joe, uh, a leader um, who leaves a legacy that few others can ever match. Um, his people, Ngāti Whātua, nearly homeless, before the protest at uh, Takaparafo, uh, the 506 days where he asserted the right of Ngāti Whātua over the remnants of the land, the, the, the thousands of hectares that they once owned and the thousands of hectares that they had given uh, to Governor Hobson on which the city, Tamaki Makoto, Auckland, was created. And Joe leaves a legacy of a people proud of what they have achieved, establishing uh, an area that they uh, now have and have always had as their home. And we owe an immense amount to people with the vision, the determination and the commitment uh, such as Joe Hawke had. And we remember him here today. Can I congratulate Auckland Unlimited, uh, Nick, for putting on uh, the, the, the conference today. And I want to particularly congratulate you for that fantastic video that we had. Um, some of us are older than others in this audience. We're baby boomers. Uh, all of us are older than the kids that have been up on the video. Uh, but they were important because they are our future. This is what we are here for today, to create a decent future for them, for our mokopuna. And uh, out of the mouth of babes comes some incredible wisdom. We don't know what the future is like. We've never seen it. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, and we can't change the past, uh, but we can change the future. And I think from what those kids said, we should be inspired by what they loved about our city, and there's much to love about it. We should take note of the concerns that they have and a particular focus on the environment and climate change. Uh, and we should commit ourselves to creating, uh, in this place, our city, a, a world-class city that is inclusive, that is sustainable, that is prosperous, that is exciting, uh, that is one of the best cities in the world to live. That is our challenge. That needs to be our vision. I'd like to say that we're coming out of the pandemic, but talking to Nick and Pam... I noticed that a number of our speakers today can't be with us uh, because, like many in this room, um, they, have, um, they, they have caught COVID and, uh, like most of us, they will recover and they won't suffer too badly. But it has been an extraordinary period of time for all of us. The first time in my lifetime that I've lived through a period that has been affected by an international pandemic where our lives have been thoroughly disrupted. And there is much that we can celebrate about how we have come through that pandemic, limiting the impact that it may have had uh, on people, giving them the chance to get inoculated, uh, making sure our hospital systems weren't overrun. But we cannot deny what the cost to our city and our country and indeed the, the whole of the, the global community has been. And we're about two weeks off putting together um, the final mural proposal uh, for the budget, and uh, I'm particularly dominated by what the economic impact of COVID has been on our city uh, and our council, uh, a loss cumulatively of something like $900 million. And that's $900 million of the dreams and the things that we would love to have done that we have had to defer uh, and, and hold back. But now, while we're learning to live with the pandemic, we need to start refocusing on the challenges that we have before us as a city. And many of those challenges go, go right back to when I was, uh, the, the, the themes that I was campaigning on in 2016, the infrastructure deficit, that this city of ours that has grown so rapidly in the last decade uh, failed to keep up with providing the infrastructure we needed to meet that growth uh, for fresh water, uh, for treating wastewater, for stormwater, for transport infrastructure, for our parks and community facilities. And that's why in the last long-term plan, albeit um, just before uh, COVID, we have made that massive investment of $31.8 billion in the city's infrastructure. And we need that infrastructure. But much more than that, 
Uh, we have the problems of traffic congestion. Uh, those of you that travelled on the motorway this morning would have found that it, it felt very much like we were living in pre-COVID times. And that's compounded by the growth of our, our emissions, our carbon emissions. And we have to tackle both of those problems. Uh, those problems have increased because the number of people living in our city have increased. There's climate change, which is no longer a future problem. It's a problem that's happening right now, with new temperature records being set each year, sea levels rising and severe weather events, droughts, we're in the third drought in a row in Auckland, and floods occurring more and more frequently. And we face, as the, the kids pointed out on that video, the challenges of environmental sustainability and degradation. The determination that we have, finally after a century of our wastewater overflowing into our harbour every time it rains, to stop that happening with the massive uh, $1.1 billion central interceptor project. Later today, you'll, um, you'll hear from um, the people that put together the study on the future of Auckland. So Peter Gluckman, Ann Bardsley, and Dornell Klein. They're reimagining Tamaki Makoro. And one of their criticisms is a valid criticism, that we as elected representatives think in the short term. That's inevitable because we need to focus on the problems that are immediately facing the city because our ability to improve people's lives in the near future is what you and all of our electors expect of us. But it is fair to say that the three-year electoral term, both for council and for parliament, is less than optimal in encouraging long-term thinking. The importance of Sir Peter Gluckman's work is that we need to think beyond our immediate work program and to plan for what we want our city and our community to look like more than a generation hence. We have an Auckland plan that we revise each term and that looks 30 years ahead. Uh, Sir Peter's work takes us two generations out and I applaud the vision that they set for our city a socially cohesive city, a city of creativity and culture, a city focused on education and innovation that has to be a smart city, a sustainable and resilient city that has the potential to be a national park city. And indeed, we are blessed to live in the natural environment that we as a city enjoy. It's also important to remember that we are the world's largest Maori city, our point of difference to the world and the unique culture that Māori gives to us. We are the world's largest Polynesian city and that creates a, its own flavour. Last night I was at the South Indian uh, Festival's celebration and we think about our city as the, one of the most diverse in the world from an ethnic point of view and the richness that that diversity gives us. Those things are all huge assets. While we need to move forward one step at a time, Looking up at the horizon and reminding ourselves of where we want to go is also very important. All of this, hopefully, will be encompassed in the discussions that we have today. And in these opening remarks, I can only talk very briefly, uh, and I want to focus on two issues. The first is how we can advance our recovery from the impact of COVID-19 and the lockdowns that Auckland has suffered from disproportionately. And second, I want to talk about some immediate plans on climate change, which can't wait for a recovery in council revenues from the impact of COVID and need to be started right now. COVID, as I said before, interrupted our lives in a way that none of us had predicted. And of course, it impacted on Auckland much more than elsewhere in the country. In particular, the city centre was hit hardest. We had six months of level three and level four restrictions, approximately three times more than anywhere else in the country. Our spending across Auckland dropped by 6% over 22 months, but in the city centre, it dropped by 35%, while the rest of the New Zealand saw spending rise by about 3%. We stagnated in our GDP, in fact, it dropped, while the rest of the country grew by five to 6%. All of that is important because Auckland makes up 35% of this country's workforce, 38% of its GDP, 40% of its, the taxation it pays to government. Border closures meant that this city that thrived on migration was deprived on the skills of the skills and talent migration brings to our economy. 
We also account for 55% of the country's international student population. And that brought in uh, a, couple of million, a couple of billion dollars a year to Auckland, and that was hit hard. So our challenge now is to promote a recovery that matches the rate of the impact that COVID had on us uh, in a negative sense. We need to recover positively. And the good news is that we are seeing that turnaround. Last week, the motorway figures were 98% of pre-COVID. And I said before, uh, this morning it felt like 100%. Uh, our public transport is up to a, just under 60%, twice the level that it was uh, just two months ago, but still only 60% of pre-COVID. And, and pedestrian traffic in Queen Street was up by nearly 6% in the last fortnight over the previous fortnight. And as students come back to tertiary institutions, as office workers come back to work, as visitors come to the city, as our borders progressively open, we will see this city come back to life. We're seeing events, and if you haven't been at the Aotea Centre since it's been renovated, go in and have a look and see how fantastic it looks. But they'll be hosting musicals, Chess, Oliver, the girl from North Country, Spark Arena, uh, out that will be hosting concerts. We'll be seeing international sports matches at Mount Smart and Eden Park. And next year, of course, we host the FIFA World, Women's World Cup. By itself, that event creates uh, $60 million in GDP for Auckland, 130,000 bed nights, and its televised audience will be over a billion viewers around the world. What a great platform to promote the city. The cup draw will be held uh, this October, and again, that will draw attention to our city. Last year, and it seemed ironic, we were named by Lonely Planet uh, as the best city in the world to visit in 2022. And that came as we were locked down in a huge sense of frustration. But for the second half of this year, we can leverage off that as we welcome people back to our city. We've got a lot to celebrate. The new open spaces to, to Komiti Tanga outside the old CPO, uh, to Wananga, the new Harbourside Park, uh, the, renovate, the, the upgrades of Key Street and K Road, and uh, so many things that we can be proud of that our city is creating. More people in the town in the evenings will create a safer environment, but we still need to work with police and other agencies to ensure that we can dispel the perception that it is not safe to be in the city centre. Today is a chance to hear your views and input on a range of things that will facilitate the recovery of our city centre. I want to finally to finish on climate change. Because if we as a city, we as a country, we as, a, as a, a planet fail to address this problem, we will not ward off a grim future for our kids and grandkids. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report released recently painted an incredibly bleak future, but it offered hope. There is still time to turn that around, just, and we need to do it. Last year was the hottest in record for our city in 110 years that records have been held, and my guess is that this year will break that record once again. We found out a month ago that our sea level rises in Auckland will be uh, around 30 centimetres in the next 10 to 20 years, and as I said before, we're suffering the third year of extreme weather events uh, with the drought we face. But the the news, I think, is positive that increasingly people accept that not only is climate change happening, but it's happening now. And if you looked across the Tasman at the success of the Teal independence in Austra the Australian election on Saturday, taking over 15 previously safe Liberal seats, campaigning predominantly on climate change, there is an example of the potential force this, this issue is developing. Submissions to Auckland Council on our climate uh, plan targeted rate um, for a billion dollars investment with, with government funding as part of that, um, received a record number of submissions, the highest we've ever received in an annual plan, 11,000. 68% for, 27% against. And in an independent poll, again a 12 point margin of support as against opposition to a rate increase for climate change. Whoever votes for a rate increase, well, Aucklanders have said that's what they want because they believe in what it's going to be spent on. 
Uh, our focus will be on transport, and it must be, because 43% of our carbon emissions are from transport. Just a fortnight ago, we opened the Northern Busway, the latest extension, five kilometres long. There is an example that if you provide a good public transport system, people will use it. 53% of people coming from the shore into the city centre in peak hour now travel by bus when people said, wealthy North Shore people, they'll never do that. The city rail link, the planned uh, light rail development, the eastern busway, the new ferry infrastructure, all of those things are what we need to do. And our climate action targeted rate will facilitate that as well as uh, creating a better urban canopy, uh, urban forest canopy uh, in the areas of the city that are most disadvantaged. I look forward to the discussion today, extending the conversation on further measures that we should be taking as a priority. Thank you for your interest in being here today. Thank you for your contribution on the discussion on how we can make our city world class, how we can make our city a great, inclusive and exciting place to be. I wish you an enjoyable and stimulating day. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tato katoa. Thank you very much. <laughs>